people of Earth, are you abnormal? Do people think you're strange? Do you? Then you may be on the right track. Unpredictables are not alone and possess amazing hidden powers of their own. If you answered yes to the questions above, then you are probably better than most people. Yes, your kind shall triumph. The Church of the Subgenius could save your sanity. Hello, everybody. I have not gone crazy, and I have the tests to prove it. I am R.J. Carter, Senior Managing Editor here at CriticalBlast.com, and tonight we are not talking about comic books that are crowdfunding. We are talking about, I really don't know. It's a movie, so it falls within our purview of entertainment coverage at CriticalBlast.com. That's a hint. That's a website you should visit. We do reviews and stuff. So tonight, we are going to talk about a movie that we will have the review up for soon and will be on Amazon very soon called J.R. Bob Dobbs and the Church of the Subgenius. And with us tonight, we have the director, Sandy K. Boone. Sandy, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. And we also have fellow subgeniuses, the Reverend Ivan Stang. Reverend Stang. <laughs> and Dr. Philo Drummond. Dr. Drummond, welcome to the show. Howdy, howdy. <laughs> Christ so, Bob. Yeah. Great problem. <laughs> I, I, I will I will be completely honest here. I ran into Bob 20 years ago on the internet, and nobody could tell me anything about what Bob was. Um, hmm. Bob looked like he had walked right out of a Jack Dick track to me. And it, it was interesting. I was like, I want to know more about this, but it's like everything I read was like, no, that doesn't that, that doesn't track. I I'd ask people and say, oh, yeah, it's a subgenius church. That's by design. <sighs> yeah, that, it worked. It, it worked. Because I kept thinking, I kept overthinking, like, subgenius, that's like subconscious. It's like like Satan trying to get into your, your brain and unlock things. But it just means that I was overthinking it. Um, so... We have a movie now after so many years of you going viral before the internet. Uh, I guess my first question will be to Sandy. How did you find out what, what road led you to Bob? <laughs> well, actually, Doug and uh, Philo were uh, here. I'm not with Steve Wilcox. What do you want me to call you guys? Anyway, they uh, were friends with my late husband. And uh, they were kind of drinking buddies, band, pink boys. Wasn't it pink boys? And, uh, and they all were, they had a mutual friend and they all met back. And my husband uh, was Rupo De La Rosa and he was just a crazy redneck bastard. Uh, his character, not him. It was That's actually him. <laughs> so, anyway. San Sandy's late husband was an important early contributor to the uh, Church of the Subgenius uh, before we ever got, you know, yeah. known all that well. And his his contributions kind of worked their way into the. Well, they were at, at the base of it. So uh, Sandy and David Boone were there right at the very whole thing when we were all so innocent. <laughs> yes, and so anyway, thirty years later it was, and I contacted the guys. Dave had passed. I wanted to do something to honor him and also to uh, just, I felt like we needed to have the sub genius, you know, rein, uh, reinvigorated, I guess. I mean, not that it hasn't been keeping going and bring it out here and let people, especially during this political situation. And, uh, and then when I spoke with um, Ivan Stang, when I spoke with Stang, he was saying, you know, they're all getting older and they're concerned that if they pass away, that this thing, this fake cult is really going to turn into a real cult like Scientology or Mormonism. And so he agreed. Let's let's tell the truth on this doc. So that's the story. That was, I guess that was my initial thoughts, too, when I first encountered it, you know, logos many decades ago, mm -hmm. uh, was that this was a real cult. Uh, yeah. and, and I I guess, you know, no, now having seen the documentary, and it's a joke, folks, spoiler alert, it was all a joke. Uh, how often did that come up where you had true believers uh, in, in the church? Ivan, mean, I think you need to tell that story 
about how, you know, you, so the crazies started coming in. So you broke more char character more often. Well, of course, the church of the subgenius really is a truly controlled cult. Uh, <laughs> some people got the wrong idea idea of what kind of mind control cult it was and uh, got mad at us later because they, they they realized that we were basically laughing at people exactly like them. People yeah. who would believe all kinds of, well, basically what they most wanted to hear. You know, mm -hmm. that's that's what any any good cult is all about is you just tell people what they most want to hear and some well, people you have to throw in some good new secrets every new cult, every cult has to have a lot of secrets you know and arcane doctrine so yeah. you know we yeah but you can always that. get to the secrets if you spend a little money <laughs> well our big our, our big secret was actually that we didn't really have any big secrets. And most people didn't need to be told that. It, that was pretty obvious from the get you know, for most folks. But we, we have occasionally had to deprogram our own Kool-Aid drinking zombies. And it's not a pleasant process. It really isn't. They, they end up hating you for the rest of your life. You well, know, it's not to say that it's not a real cult because uh, we are actually a real cult. It's not, you know, it's just that some cults, you know, are very serious. And we've always been kind of a jokey cult, you know, lots of jokes and laughing and cutting up and stuff. And so, you know, we don't like to take the cult business totally seriously. And people call us a joke that way. But that's not to say that some jokes aren't very serious. Just because it's a joke doesn't mean that it's not true. So that's the that's the problem with joke religions is that they a lot of people don't believe they're true. True. Because we admit that it's all bullshit, that proves to be true, honest religion. It's true. <laughs> that's the way some people would look at it, I suppose. Yeah, you know. it's just being honest. It's being honest for once, you know. Uh, you also know, have no revelations. What? That's our, one of our many slogans, though. You know, uh, a religion only has to sound good to work. It doesn't really have to be. You don't use your rational mind to think about your religion, or that's uh, just it goes. There's no use there. Well, you know, it's going to be magic. The magic is really important. Yeah, yeah, and. Uh, you gotta have, you know, yeah. lot, like I said, lots of secrets, lots of uh, weird, uh, arcane, strange, ritualistic behavior, things like that. That's what makes it more, more real. You know, we have a concept of more realism, in that things can actually be realer than real, and that's that. That's what we try to position the church is. It's actually, actually, a little bit more real than realism. Yeah, that's right. More realism, surrealism, and a little tiny bit of realism. Just a little bit of realism. But you have to have we were really into surrealism and, and more realism. That's like the connective tissue. <laughs> well, uh, in the movie, we actually, there is a scene where, um, you know, there is a crazy subgenius that's screaming at Doug, you know, and there is a scene where Doug explains that story. And he's going, dude, you know, I don't know what's wrong with you. You know, we just got stoned one night and made this all up, you know, and, and it, it was, but it was really frightening. At least Doug had said at that time, it was really scary to realize people were taking them. Well, they wanted them to take them seriously, but not that seriously. So. Yeah, it, it's, it gets to the point where if you write something down uh, and, and call it, you know, the word of, Someone is going to, there's 6 billion people out here. You've got odds on your favor that at least one of them is going to believe it is true. Uh, right. My favorite is two guys getting stoned on a, out by a fire and thinking, you know, wouldn't it be cool if we could have all the women we wanted? Um, and well, let, let's just say this angel, this Italian angel came down and gave us a book plate made of gold and told us we could do that. See how many will believe it. 
Um, <laughs> and then people wants to see the book, it's like, well, well it, 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 back. I wrote it all down. It sounds good. That's the important thing. It, it just has to, to sound good. One minute. You know. What? We've lost him. I guess he's gone to get the hamburgers. <laughs> In our case, uh, luckily, Dr. Drummond and I uh, were were able to uh, work for Bob, uh, and so we never had to be real cult leaders or deal with any of that serious stuff. To, for the most part, we just let you know Bob handle all that, and since nobody had his phone number. Uh, that that kind of worked out just fine. I, I but, love you know, that, they, 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 that Bob remained a little bit mysterious. If they wanted to know about him, they'd have to send uh, money to the Subgenius Foundation, and they could get a book or a, a pamphlet yeah, or a tape or a film or something. You know, we we've, we've got all of those things uh, available, uh, yeah. informational sources. Doctor Drummond and I methodically studied all the big cults of the 70s. Uh, this was before the internet. The Scientologists, the Masons, uh, and quite a few other uh, uh, of the of the more successful Fringe. male, Fringe. direct mail order cults. <laughs> and our original packet of stuff that we sent out from the very beginning almost mathematically extracted from the techniques of the Masons and the Scientologists. Yeah. We learned a lot. From those, those guys were the best at, you know, pulling you in. We, uh, but we also studied everything else. You know, we were really, really interested in fringe beliefs because what if one of them was true? You know, it's not like total skeptics forever. Uh, I'm a junior scientist myself, but I'm ready to believe anything if it's uh, if impressive. It's got and big feet, UFOs, wrestling zombies, atomic <laughs> nightmares. Wrestling zombies. Now you're talking. Yeah. yeah. Wrestling my, my zombies. Favorite, We're ready for it. Okay. My favorite one is that the earth is yeah. round like a globe. Yeah. Uh, that, that's my favorite. What? But we're on the inside of it. Uh, yeah, 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 sure. The the inner, inner, inner all all yeah, all your instruments of measurement shrink the further away from the surface you get so that it feels like you're going further. Uh, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> anyway, here's the point. Okay. Sandy Boone managed to make a movie that really explains the whole thing better than we ever could. And we tried. Uh, I'm a professional filmmaker myself, and I, and we put together a uh, a feature length documentary video called "A Rise" that's been around for 20 years. Lots of people have seen it. Only subgeniuses understand it. Sandy was able to translate the material into a form that just almost any audience would end up sitting in the theater and watching it and standing up at the end and going, yay, kill all the normals. <laughs> That's quite an achievement. We were not able to do that. <laughs> Sandy, being a nicer person than Dr. Drummond and me and the rest of the old guys, was able to translate it into a, a form that was still very, very smart alecky and... Uh, uh, attention getting and funny, but uh, I've, I've been in theaters where it was shown and it's like everybody likes it. They, 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 they get it somehow. Um, well, Sandy yeah, it's did hire some of the best theater. people. Her photographers, her co-writer, her yeah. editor, her sound person, all of those her producers were really, really top notch. And I know this because I'm, I was in the business before. Uh, I was, uh, I've never been so impressed with the professionalism of a documentary production as, as uh, these folks did. And, 
I trusted, I trusted Sandy, and I gave her all she, she, my home movies. You did all the home movies from a thousand years of subgenius stuff. She and her editor all that stuff, and lucky them, <laughs> tear it down to the to the things that really work. Uh, Reverend Stang is also like almost like on the hoarding level of keeping his old stuff, you know. So he has like stuff from his grade school yearbooks and things like that, you know. He's a real a real archivist in that sense. That's true. And so we had a huge storage unit and we we only used uh maybe a, a uh, 18 by 18 box of the material and a lot of the material was from what Doug the 70s 80s and so I had to get those things people go what took so long and I'm going we had to get this all put into film form that I could actually use and view and then yeah, uh, yeah I, gave, I gave him boxes of Betamax VHR, oh, yeah. eight millimeter film, yeah. Yeah, super eight, data 35 data. millimeter film, DV, yeah. uh, cassettes. super eight, yeah. every yeah. format you can, oh, and, and not to mention three quarter inch uh, umatic uh, video. That's, right. That's most yeah. of the best stuff was on that. Yeah. So it's really a nice cross section Ain't, of all of the, the technologies that we've uh, acquired over the last 50 years. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and are all these on display at the uh, Church of the Subgenius Museum, I would hope? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, <laughs> I uh, curate the uh, Destruction Evidence Museum here in <laughs> Glen Rose, Texas, where you can come visit uh, our displays of subgenius fossils as well as uh, a, a really unusual Cretaceous fossils. This area is famous for uh, dinosaur tracks. We have a few. We have a fossil alien skeleton from the Cretaceous, fossil oh. robot skeleton, a oh fossil God. devil skeleton. <laughs> you come here and I'll show you the damn skeletons. <laughs> They're at least as good as the ones at the Creationist Museum down the road. And, uh, we're, we're, uh, we're, we really, we really do uh, live in a scientifically rich and diverse area. Uh, well, right you'd here. have to go some ways to uh, go above and beyond the call of the wild down in um, Donovan, Missouri, which isn't there anymore because uh, they had Bigfoot. Uh, they had a stuffed Bigfoot in there, and Bigfoot looks a lot like a gorilla. And where they shot him looks a lot like bubble gum. Uh, uh, but we we went in and saw it every time we traveled through there when I was just a child. Uh, Philo, you were at, were you at the first revival? Yes. So so this is a uh, Philo uh, was at, at the first everything. At, well, okay, that that's true. But I didn't know if he made the trip. F F uh, Philo was there. The first revival, the one where we had uh, the wino that joined us and coined the phrase, if I can't whip it, I'll go down. That was at Buck Naked's house. I guess that was the apartment. second or third revival, probably. Yeah, no, they, they're talking about the very first one was at your house on Merrimack with the Pink Boys. It was a Pink oh, yeah. Boys concert. Yeah, it was a, I think we had a pajama, wasn't it? We had a pajama party that night. <laughs> Maybe. I think everybody had to show up in pajamas. Now, for, for the people in the audience who are not here because they know you guys already, uh, and thank you for coming, by the way. I appreciate everybody here. Um, please explain what a pink boy is so they don't confuse it with a proud boy. <laughs> well, you know, there's probably the a lot of... Church, the Church of the Sub... Oh, Philo, you, you, why don't you go ahead and take that one? Well, I was just going to say there's probably a lot of crossover there between the frat boys and the pink boys, but pink boys doesn't have anything to do with a color or anything like that. It's really a state of mind. It's more like uh, people that are uh, the normals, the ones that are controlled by conspiracy programming, the ones that are, you know, there's like the us and the them, and they're mostly on the them side, you know, so um, 
but that's doesn't really have anything to do with color. It's more of a state of mind, uh, uh, our willingness to be to be fed and uh, led. Yeah, the okay. pinks are the people who are afraid of anything new and different. They're not, or are making a decision. They're that's not interested. Uh, they don't want to know. They all. They think they already know. And yeah, that's uh, important. Yeah. Yeah. And so, okay, so a pink boy could actually be a girl then, because that's my wife. Oh yeah, very <laughs> close-minded people don't like free thinkers at all. Well, that maybe I'm not thinking of the right event then, because I thought it was the first revival, but I guess it was a bigger thing. It was a bigger venue. Bob showed up. Oh, they're talking about the one in um, in San Francisco the when they they the shot off. Oh yeah, in in uh, the four years from 1980 to 1984, the church exploded in popularity among the kind of what you might call the Burning Man crowd in a way, Pretty and uh, under underground comics fans and and so forth, uh, maybe punks, and. Uh, uh, Bob did walk out on stage in our biggest stage show we ever had. There was probably a thousand people there. Big theater in San Francisco. Bob walked out on stage. Didn't even get a word in edgewise before puzzling evidence. One of our best friends walked up and shot him. Of course, he was a puzzling evidence was a big JFK assassination freak. And to him... Nothing was real unless you shot somebody. Yeah, well, you know, he said that any any decent cult that has a personality has they somebody has to shoot that guy. You know, right, and, right, yeah. yeah no but, yeah. guru that, is going to last long if he's alive. Yeah, yeah. Uh, any any guru worth it, worth his salt had to die. Uh, I'm not so sure about that. But yeah, that was sort of a, you know. I, was, I, 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 it surprised me, honestly. I wasn't, it wasn't ready. It wasn't planned? You know, if you no. meet, the bo if you meet Bob know. on the road, you're supposed to kill him. And, and so it's very all little extrapolated from that, you know. Yeah, and in, in, in all these things, the revivals and all the other things, I mean, there's some, somewhat of a plan, but there's no control. I mean, people just kind of do what they want to do. So you got to, you know, whatever they can do. Interesting. If Bob had, after he killed Bob, if you'd let him lay there and he got up three hours later, there'd have been no stopping this thing. <laughs> oh, he did. Well, that, that was kind of the point. You know, uh, we had to we had to assassinate him a couple more times <laughs> after that before he would quit coming to shows and yeah. upstaging you know, like, all of us, Over you know. the years, devival after devival, he's been shot and killed so many times. He's the guru that just won't stay down, you know? <laughs> we keep shooting him, and he just keeps getting back up. <laughs> That's his second time, time he's on like a 23rd. In the middle of a fire. <laughs> I, I, it, it's been 40 years, and I'm still serving that... Uh, that 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 I'm st I'm that still working right for there. Bob after all this time. <laughs> that face right there. Yeah, well, and and the thing about that face, uh, it it it's it perfect. I don't know. That face away. That's pretty good. I, I don't know how what what you felt when Wait. you first saw that and you knew that that was Bob, but yeah, there there he is too. Yeah. Um, oh, hang on. Now I got. I'm gonna be. <laughs> there we go. Everybody's got their little costumes on. Yeah, got got my ball, got my brain <laughs> in here. He's a very friendly looking face. It looks like Dad's about to give you some advice. Uh, and at the same time, the longer you look at it, you're very certain he's a serial killer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he could be a serial killer. Yeah, he, he kills a lot of cereal late at night, you know, before bed. <laughs> He's the ultimate salesman. Did you ever find out, I, I know this was clip art, you were going through all this clip art because it was free, and you could put it, you know, in the 
in the pamphlets without having to paint anybody. Did you ever find out who drew Bob? It was actually based on uh, someone had rendered uh, some unknown artist rendered Bob's face from a real from a real photograph. Uh, oh yeah, there's, there's we found old ads with the photograph of Bob, and uh, the uh, photograph had been you know uh, they, they how they put the uh, the dots on it for for newspaper reproduction and everything, and yeah, that's the the closest to the actual photograph we ever got. But you can tell that it was based on a real person's face the real bob obviously he was just doing yeah, his it was back. it was originally a photographic piece of clip art and then somebody kind of changed it into more of a graphic they repainted it or something and just uh, you know like if you drew over the the original it, photo. it's immortal i mean you go to pompeii or ancient rome and you'll find graffiti of bob's face scratched into the walls and tattooed no, onto the happen, dead Pompeian fossil people. You know, there's there, there's been Bob fans around for literally just about as long as history. There's there's lots of anachronistic on. anomalies in that we discovered this stuff in the past. It couldn't possibly exist, and yet there it is. It's the whole thing, like when you find out that Jesus smoked Chesterfields. Wow. <laughs> existed back then but somehow that's what happened but you got to have faith you know it's still a, a faith based it's kind of a faith based but it's more of a face based religion. A face it's a face based religion it's not really faith based with a th but face with a c face it's those and it's those dots if you've ever looked at the face up close you see those dots on there those dots have power. Every <laughs> single one has its own power. I've seen a video, a, a GIF or whatever it is, uh, where you zoom in on the face of Bob until you see the dots, yeah. and then you keep zooming in, and each one of the dots is the face of Bob. Bob's face yeah, is yeah. A, I, I, it's a Mandelbrot brought fractal, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Well, the whole world is actually a gigantic Dobbs head. If you do enough really psychedelic drugs like DMT and mushrooms on top of IPA beers and whiskey, you'll you'll see that the entire earth is actually caught in a huge Dobbs head. I wouldn't recommend that to anyone, by the way. Well, some people. I'm just, you take my word for it. You, have that, you don't need to see it. That pipe, you know, the pipe is the key to the face. Mm -hmm. The pipe is the key to the face. Right. right. The That's pipe it. is the key to the face. Yeah. Without and, the and pipe, the new, face doesn't even. That's actually a new line. Some people know that the pipe is actually smoking the head. It's just a reverse. The pipe <laughs> is, I'm writing this down. The pipe is the key. To the pipe. This is where it all came from, y'all. This is exactly how it works. Philo will get high and say some idiotic thing. I'll go, what was that? The pipe is the key to the face. You, 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 you saw, just you stick it in, it, twist it, and the face comes on. It's like i he's the mystic, and I'm the scribe. Uh, that takes down, you know, towards the history of, of the mystic utterances. So it this always, is always you, been you just make it up as you go, and they just keep making it up. Oh, no, this is all uh, channeled. <laughs> oh, it's right. Revelatory. It's not made up. This is revelatory. Yeah, yeah, I'm channeled. Okay. Channeled. Yeah, it's channeled from a divine power. Exactly. Or you, you, Maybe not oh, divine, oh. but. Some kind of power. Hello <laughs> comes up with the facts. Reverend Ivan Stang writes down the facts, and then the masses get vaccinated. Uh, That's right. <laughs> so. Anyway, here's one thing I know. That movie is really funny. It's really okay. fun. It moves fast as hell. It's like 90 okay. minutes goes by in seconds, it seems like. And uh, it's uh, the 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 amount of detail in the editing and the animation and the soundtrack 
are just amazing. And I, I can say this as an expert who was a uh, OCD film editor and video and audio editor myself. It's, uh, they did an amazing job uh, turning this chaotic story prehensible piece of propaganda that should save many, many souls. I and it comes out on Amazon. Or at least let a few weirdos know that they're not alone. That's really <laughs> honestly what it's yeah. what what it's good for is That's people true. that think us as weird as them. They look at us and go, oh there's somebody even weirder than me. <laughs> what did right. you say it comes out on Amazon? Tuesday, this Tuesday, and when it does, I'm going to come back. I'm going to edit the description below because normally I have a link to whatever we're talking about. So go okay. here to see this link. So now the it says it. go here to see this blank. Okay. Uh, if you see a link, you're watching it on replay. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. But uh, you know, yeah, as soon as it's out on Amazon, I'll come back in and edit the description, and then everybody watching it after Tuesday will see a link to Amazon, and and it will be. Our affiliate link. So if you click on it, we get like 30 cents. I uh -huh. have to say legally because apparently there are people who will link to Amazon for free uh, and, and get nothing for it. Uh, these good Samaritans are welcome to do that. If I've got an affiliate link, I'm going to use my affiliate link. Uh, that's what it's for. I just have to tell people I'm doing that. Okay. I don't know. Okay. This should be exciting because Philo and I both live in little rural towns. In the middle of nowhere, uh, the very, very conservative and religious. And as soon as this movie comes out, I'm sure at some point there's going to be people going, "Who's that? That guy's right here in Glenmos. Let's go get our torches and burn down this castle." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like he lives closer to rednecks than I do. Yeah, that's my, true. My, my redneck. I've, I've been dreaming of that since childhood. <laughs> my, my rednecks around here are all hillbillies. They're all real nice. They just want to pick and grin and stuff, you know. Well, it doesn't say where you live. It shows. It shows. So. Oh, that's right. The movie does show that Doug is from Glen Rose, Texas. Yeah, yeah. living in Glen Rose, Texas. Right. Oh yeah, it doesn't show. Yeah. Yeah. Been people will know about me. She's she just docked him again. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Uh, I've been like, going out of my way to be real friendly to everybody in town. <laughs> you know, they're all, uh, hopefully they'll all go, oh, that's that nice old man with that hat. <laughs> I thought oh, he was a great son. <laughs> from Ohio. He, he's an all right guy. He's not, much, he's not really that much of a Satanist. <laughs> Do you have anybody who joins, and I'm sure that there's no restrictions on this kind of thing, um, who are, you know, conservative Christian believers who are just there because they're also weird. Uh, I want to say, okay, let me say, first of all, there's a lot more, and that's the one thing that I found out when I was shooting the movie, that, um, and it's brought up a couple of times in the film, but that people have their faiths that they were raised in, and most people kept those faiths. They just, this was so fun and so smart and so a way for them to let off steam that they also were so genius. Now, there's the other group that doesn't believe at all or any of those things. And it's really, and my husband happened to be an agnostic and I was on the board of a, a Christian church. And uh, and Doug on stage, it was pretty funny, he was talking to everybody, he goes, yeah, we, you know, it took a woman because it was supposed to be a boys club. It took a woman and she's a Christian, folks. I mean, that's pretty scary. <laughs> but, um, you know, uh, the main thing about the film, and, and I think after you, you get to see it, is realizing that we're all very, very different, but you don't, we just have fun and really enjoy each other for who they are. And the other thing that I've learned from this film is that the subgenius act like they're scary and they're weirdos and stuff. I met some, I've been all over the world. And I've met so many subgenius through this film, some of the nicest people I ever met. And I told Doug, I said, well, Doug, actually, some of the subgenius are more Christian than the Christians that I know that are in the church. 
huge. And sometimes going, well, because <laughs> you want to be like, you know, they're really weird. I'm going, no. In fact, it was amazing. I thought I might have a problem when we were on stage and they were, first I was a woman and then they said, well, yeah, her husband was agnostic, but she was a Christian. And they, they came up and hugged me afterwards after they saw the film during the film festivals and said, we just thank you so much for showing it. And it was perfectly okay who I was, you know, they liked it all. So that was, it was pretty sweet actually. You know? That's good. Um, now, you know, any true uh, religion worth its salt that, that survives for so long isn't really a religion until it's had babies. Um, you know, the, the, the Catholic Church was there until Martin Luther nailed his little thing up on the door and said, start my own thing, guys, come with me. Uh, and, you know, since then, all the different Protestant denominations scattered out. Have there been any schisms within the Church of the Subgenius, or have you been able to pretty much put the screws down on that kind of thing? You know, I planned on that from the very beginning. One of the first rules was that if as soon as you joined, you need to start your own cult. Right. So... At the very beginning, we never even had to deal with that. But we did have a lot of spinoffs at the very beginning. And some of them got to be quite outrageous and very um, vociferous and, and out there. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the first earliest ones was the bleeding head of Arnold Palmer Launcher Society. <laughs> actually, they worshipped a, a statue of, of the head of Arnold Palmer that looked like it was bleeding. So, yeah, um, that way we never had to deal with schisms because we, we encouraged them at the very we, end. We, we encouraged them because we knew they were going to happen anyway. Again, this yeah, is we, a we mathematically assembled religion. We were methodical about what element to go in. It's like, of course, there's going to be schisms. Of course, there's going to be... You have to have an enemy. You have to have a, a goal, Slack. You have to have a hero, Bob. The enemy is conspiracy. You the have schism, to have every subgenius can start his own rebel alliance, you know. Uh, and uh, I've enjoyed being the Darth Vader, honestly. <laughs> I've, I'm kind of like, uh, takes, has been more of the nice, he's more of the good cop. I'm the bad cop. At, at the um, very beginning, um, we had we had to have testimonials from satisfied uh, adherents. Um, we had to have all the accoutrements of every religion, you know, that so you could see that it was legitimate, you know. And um, some of the other things we had early on were, uh, besides the testimonials, we had a uh, a questionnaire um, that the that the the potential inductees had to fill out a very very detailed questionnaire uh people yeah were, we uh, quit doing that because the, the every people kept filling them out and sending them in and there was no room for them <laughs> they, you know, i've got the giant sacks of the old ones uh it was just I it was out of control. I they weren't machine readable is the problem. Yeah. You know, we weren't ready for a data uh, processing back then. This they was were hilarious, 1980s, though. You know, early 80s. And, and, and you were able to spread the message so quickly, surprisingly quickly, without the machine age upon us. I mean, uh, I, I can only well, imagine. We, we had friends in low places. Um, Robert Crumb, the great <laughs> underground cartoonist, that was first uh, reprinted our stuff in his weirdo magazine number one. A lot of people saw it there. Heavy Metal magazine, the editor of that. At but that we, time. You know, we had a lot of our own uh, yep. efforts. We knew early on we had to be our own marketing department because we we couldn't rely on other people to pick us up. So we had sticker pages, lots of little ads that people could. <laughs> take a page of the, these ads and cut them out and paste them everywhere. We had the Dobbs heads. People could distribute everywhere. We kind of wanted to depend on ourselves. Then we really didn't have a concept that people were going to pick us up and, and, and duplicate us and try to try to spread the word for us. At, yeah, at we, we later, point. we later learned that that's called some is dot. Some is dot is, uh, 
the the term for that uh, self perpetuating advertising. We used to do. Um, we would take our pamphlets, and since we didn't have a distributor, we used to do something called drop lifting. It's the it's the opposite of shoplifting. It's where you take your product into a store and you put it on their shelves for them to sell. <laughs> so we would go around around Dallas to all the record stores and alternative stores and things and sneak in there. One of one of us would get the store owner's attention while the other one went over and stuck pamphlets in their in their bookshelves and stuff. I always wanted to be there when somebody walked up with a pamphlet and the owner had to ring it up for a dollar, you know. Like, what are you doing? This kind of <laughs> well, these weren't like the Jeff Chick tracks where you, you know you put them in the back of the urinal pipe uh, while somebody's in the bathroom and you pick it up. From there. Who's going to pick something we up? Well, those were a big inspiration for the whole <laughs> Church of the Subgenius. Honestly, uh, our original concept was that we were going to publish something we could leave in laundromats, oh, like right. Chick tracks and Jehovah's Witness pamphlets, which both of which, by the way. I consider to be admirably uh, made, really, really well done. The Jehovah's Witnesses art style was a huge influence on uh, the subgenius look in general. And of course, Jack Chick, I mean, uh, give me a break. I mean, that guy was like one of the underground cartoonists of his time, albeit completely insane. But it was still great stuff, you know. A, a good friend of ours produced a feature-length documentary about Jack Chick called God's Cartoonist by Kurt Kursteiner. If you Google God's Cartoonist by Kurt Kursteiner, it's a, a really good documentary about the, the whole Chick tract world. It's, it's not in any way... Uh, offensive and yet it's really funny dr hal robbins and and i do a lot of commentary on it in a a way that's so polite you'd never know that we think this guy's a complete maniac and it, that makes it all the all the funnier actually god's cartoonist by kirk kirstein now, have you Kirk ever run one, into of the, one of the people who's in the uh, subgenius movie quite a bit? He's a, he's a very articulate subgenius preacher. He's yeah, one of the conservative. Uh, he's he's one of what you, what you might call the 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 uh, non liberal geniuses. Uh, he, uh, he got us in trouble a couple of times too. With, uh, yeah, he sure did. Uh, he got us in a lot of trouble. <laughs> Where he, would call, he used funny to be an guy. expert at calling in on call-in talk shows and things and getting them going and then Art, dropping the, the bomb. The best, the best subgenius just got us in a lot of trouble. <laughs> Dr. Lehume got us into trouble. Bless his heart. Uh, Papa Joe Mama. Uh, the, the, there's, uh, the Sterno, Jainer, the whole Doctors for Bob gang and Little Rock, they got us into Tons of trouble. We just all made us we do just different situations. Yeah. The negative. They the greatest. They were the greatest subgeniuses. <laughs> Have you ever, um, now that it's out, you know, you're, you had these influences from the Jehovah Witnesses and uh, the Ch Chick Tracks and stuff in the formative years of, of the subgenius. Have you ever run into any of those people? And you know, had their reaction. Oh my God, what have we rocked? <laughs> We're responsible for this. Not like we wanted, really. You know, early on, what we had to do, we had to be our own enemy. We knew we, we knew that people we would t pay more attention to us if we had a good enemy that was attacking us. And so we be, we started our own own alternative uh, hate group called the Citizens for Normalcy. And we wrote some tracks <laughs> condemning the church of the subgenius and, and they were, you know, ruining the kids and ruining the schools. You gotta, there's so many drugs and horrible UFOs and cult stuff. You gotta get control over this. It was citizens for normalcy was our, our best enemy. And of course it was us, but who, who, could, who could do it better than us, right? 
We have met the enemy and he is us. <laughs> he is us. So what kind of a, a, a boom? I, I imagine you had to have seen a, a, a massive influx in interest once there was bulletin board system and the, the birth of the internet. Well, you know, our, one of the back on the before the World Wide Web, if you wanted to be on the internet, you it was pretty difficult. You had to have a bulletin board service, or you were, and where we where we posted things back then was on the Usenet. Yeah, and and one of the earliest biggest sites on the Usenet was Alt Slack, and it was one of the. In fact, I had to show it that it existed. I can remember at a up at the office, I was sitting at a at a printer, a big printer, and I was printing out this Usenet news group just so I could take it to Reverend Stang and show him how much was going on out there already. It was huge. And this was what? Was it 84 or something? Probably 1984. It was really yeah, yeah, yeah. We, 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 uh, Church of the Subgenius was showing up on Usenet in, in, in the early 80s. That's, it was 84, that's I really far back. Because of the geeks, yep. you know, the geeks and weirdos, the nerds, and all those uh, OCD victims, and uh, the fan, you know, comic book nuts, and <laughs> that's all I am is comic book nuts. Yeah, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's that's pretty much all we do all day long here is, is uh. movies. <laughs> I, I will say that we. We've, we've moved into publishing. Let's see if I can flip this. So uh, I'm just uh, thrilled with the fact that uh, my career with Church of the Sub Genius led me to meet many of my heroes in person. Uh, the Fire Sign Theater, uh, a lot of the Zap comic artists like Robert Crumb and Robert Williams and uh, Gilbert Shelton, that whole. Uh, Paul Mavridis is yeah. our brother. He's one of the main <laughs> collaborators. Uh, you know, we I I got to I've gotten I got to I got to hang Paul Krasner, Robert Anton Wilson, uh, Timothy Leary, all kinds of super weirdo oh, yeah. uh, and. <laughs> And uh, 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 hippie, uh, bad boy philosophers. It was fabulous. You can, you can't of, uh, follow and I are showing off comic books. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I have, there's a crossover with uh, Starwood Festival. I, I'm not a new ager, and I don't believe in magic. Oh, you're Those, so old. Not even in a young girl's heart. But I but, married a lady who runs one of the biggest pagan world music, new age, hippy dippy festivals in the country. Oh, look so, <laughs> and I ended up meeting people that I've made vicious fun of. Uh, I really, really mocked the Wiccans and the Church of All Worlds and all those people, the Discordians. I professionally mocked them, and now they're my buddies. <laughs> the only ones who got, get this, the only ones I don't know are the fl uh, Flying Spaghetti Monster. I don't know any, <laughs> any Flying Spaghetti Monster people. Oh, okay. I'd, I'd know Carrie Thorn, the late Carrie Thornley from the Discordians. You know, I knew Robert Wilson and Robert Shea. I, 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 I Wavy Gravy. And All these bizarre old hippies, <laughs> and I never met the flying spaghetti monster people. Oh, I didn't realize that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> huh? Uh, the the, the yeah. are an interesting group. You got a spinner rack, man. I've got. The file I was in <laughs> San Francisco. Falling over their comic book. Was a running <laughs> man for every year for years. He knows all the super weirdos of. Uh, the San Francisco, California area, they're all, that's all, you know, old, that's yeah. under the bridge for us old folks. I'm, I'm so glad I had this discussion. For 17 years. Ken Casey was our 
was our was a sub genius. Yeah. I'm gonna and have Reverend to, uh, Hardly Visible was his secret name. I'm gonna have to satirize now the Church of the Sub Genius in my next book. Uh, <laughs> I I have to separate that out. Critical Blast is a publishing house. We do publish other people's books like our last anthology, The Devil You Know. This is where I shill a little bit. Okay. <laughs> and this is uh, 20 stories about people's encounters with uh, Old Scratch and what they do with it. Uh, but then wow. outside of Critical Blast, I write for another publisher, uh, Destroyer Books, where I get to chronicle the adventures of Remo Williams. Uh, and that's they're always satirizing something in a Destroyer book. And now I want to bring the Church of the Subgenius in there somehow in my next book. I don't know how yet. I'll shoehorn it in some way. <laughs> okay. Well, you'll be in real good company. <laughs> the, the problem we've, is, we've, I heard we've been, this. Uh, we've been uh, dragged into all kinds of weird little fringe series and things. You well, never know where the Dobbs head pop up. Well, Pee Wee's Playhouse had the Dobbs head. What else? Uh, oh, uh, no, oh, Pee Wee, yeah. Yeah, you know, uh, it's been uh, actually joined the that thing. It's been amazing some of the places it's turned up. Yeah, exactly. You know, and that's. Uh, do you have some? Uh, there was. I can't think of them off the top of my head right now. Uh, what was the late night show? His, the Dob head was in the back. The late night. Oh, uh, David, David Letterman. David Letterman. David Letterman. His, Dobbs had Bob Dobbs in the back. Bill Letterman had a Dobbs head in the background for a long time, but uh, one of his producers uh, told him never to have us on his show. Oh, really? Yeah, oh. I mean, yeah. There was a producer that was uh, against us. I, I, uh, I had, I had a friend, uh, Bleepo, uh, was uh, involved in New York production oh. back then. Okay. Uh, anyway, we, it's it's all for the best. Everything worked out perfectly. Yeah. Philo and I both live on beautiful properties full of Bigfoots and monsters. <laughs> and Sandy uh, directed the best movie about Church of the Subgenius that's ever been done, even though she's a Christian. <laughs> even right? That proves it, man. Oh yeah, <laughs> so funny. Now, this is, this uh, can be available uh, for streaming, yeah. huh? So we're 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 real. How everything turned out. <laughs> this movie, be uh, J.R. Bob Dobbs and the Church of the Sub Genius, will be streaming this Tuesday. Available on Amazon. Uh, if it's after Tuesday, the link will be down there. Before Tuesday, you're going to have to wait. I'll put the link down there. Okay. Will it be coming in? on DVD anytime soon, or is it a simultaneous release? Uh, no. Uh, the distributor said that he, we had to see how well it did on VOD, and then whether he, and he was going to take that option to do a DVD. Now, I'm required because I had a Kickstarter, and so I will be doing DVDs to give back to uh, many people for their um, investment. And uh, so I will be making. Yeah, fun. yeah. People, there were a lot of people who uh, who contributed money to the to the show, right. and they'll get they'll eventually get their DVDs. Right. Uh, no, you know, I, I, who, who even on. watches DVDs anymore? Everything's like streaming. Well, but yeah. I am working. As on Sandy, it. as you, as you and I and the distributor all know, the minute that thing gets out. There will be bootleg DVD. Oh, and he yeah. knows that. That's why he didn't want me to make DVDs until after it premiered. And uh, we started making some money. So it's yeah, just. You gotta remember, there's all these sub geniuses out there. And the first thing they're going to do is. Is they're going to bootleg that DVD. That's true. <laughs> They'll bootleg the hell. It'll be the most bootlegged movie ever bootlegged. <laughs> They'll bootleg okay. two or three copies just for themselves. Uh, that's pretty sad. I just, and I keep trying to tell them, guys, we did not make any money on this movie. We really need to make some money on this movie, please. Uh, no, no kidding, y'all. Uh, this is not a low budget documentary feature. No, film. It's a labor of love. Uh, a <laughs> lot. It, you can I'm tell over. by looking Maybe at I'm it. I'm over. It's it's uh, uh, it's a really really high am I over? buck. Are project with a lot of work put into it. I mean, 
all this you got yeah. animation and editing and so I know how long all that takes. I used yeah. to do that myself. And uh, yeah. even if you download a bootleg DVD, you should go ahead and pay to see it. Yes, please. Twice. Uh, three right. times. Right. Uh, pay, right. uh, for all your family members. Right. Pay, pay to see it even if you don't want to see it. Uh, <laughs> the, the stream it you know? and walk away. Right. Yeah, exactly. whatever. Uh, it's... Uh -huh. it, you can buy the book and never open it, you know? There's Yeah. There looks it's a it's great copy table book, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're it, still trying it to get is. this it's worth it. It's a really it's a beautiful movie and they <laughs> they well, they wisely turned it into kind of a a buddy movie about me and Philo. Well, it does have a lot of heart, but that's what the guys would never say. It's, the sub genius are just you know they're teddy bears, whether they like it or not. <laughs> Most of them are really, truly. Yeah, we're not gonna, we're not gonna come out and say that. But you did a really good job of. Well, you know what you did, Sandy. You captured the playfulness. That's it, essentially the whole subgenius thing is more than anything else. It's playful. And fun. We were yeah. having fun. It's We're true. still having fun, and <laughs> and you managed to capture that just beautifully. Well, Are you going to have the new pilgrimage in twenty twenty one? What? Hmm? Are you going to have the uh, the pilgrimage in twenty twenty one for the what do you call it, the, the oh, X day? Well, yeah, I, I don't know. I hope so. I probably it, can still do that. They're uh, they did do it online, correct? The real X Day. We, we, yeah, we did a virtual X Day. It was really it was fun. Like it was fun. And it made more money than any real X Day ever did because oh. there was no expenses. And the, it was air conditioned. And there were no <laughs> bugs and no mud. It was a wonderful virtual so X Day. Is, uh, it's but, we're ever going to do another live X day. <laughs> probably, 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 you know, I'm not wearing pants. We don't know what next year holds. <laughs> but, well, next year the Exodus will come and take all the stuff. You don't, you don't right wear, to uh, pants Planet to X on day. July 5th. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> but finally, you're freezing up there and I, I can hear you trying to cut in, but we're just getting like a word or something. And right now I just have a still image of your head. Right. Uh, we can type right, right in it right there and it would be perfect. Um, you know, you know <laughs> this is what I do now. I talk to people on my stream and I give them ideas that they can go do and then I don't have to do any effort or spend any money. Uh -huh. what, you, what you do, Ivan, since you couldn't do the real X day this year, is you go out before the next X day, two days before, and you leave a sign said, where were you? We told you to be waiting. The aliens. The saucer came. It's <laughs> the day you missed. They didn't. They they came and you weren't there. <laughs> That's an idea. <laughs> Reverend Susie, Susie did that one year where once we got up at seven a.m. we got there in time to see the saucers land. But just before we got there, she had gone out and laid in a big circle, laid all this clothing out, like everybody got. Wraps yeah, empty, wraps. empty clothing as if we were late to the oh. party. Oh, um, good, very good. True story. <laughs> true story. My uh, heard this in my church when I was a young man uh, from from a Bible college attendee. Guy got kicked out of his Bible college because he laid out his clothes on the bed like he'd been laying there empty. Took a bugle up to the clock tower and blew it. Oh. <laughs> This was a Pentecostal church college here. <laughs> you want to talk about some heart attacks going on? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Everybody was mad because they realized they hadn't been raptured. That's right. <laughs> what about to. me? <laughs> what about me? <laughs> oh, there's going to be many will be saying, what about me when the rapture comes, my friend? When the rapture comes, many will be saying, but what about me? I was a good <laughs> Christian. I went to church every week. I, I praised President Trump. I was a good Christian. 
I it's hated really all those others. Turmoil. Because I tell why, you, why come? What about me? Mm. Everybody who's here is the be judgmental going. will be at the judgment, my friend. <laughs> yes, I have them crackers. What 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 I think is going to happen is, you know, everybody who's left here is going to be saying, you know, what about me? Why didn't I go? And everybody up there is going to be looking around saying, what the hell are you doing here? <laughs> there'll, be, there'll be a lot of people up there nobody expected. <laughs> That's probably true. <laughs> Sandy, when you, if you've got the Kickstarter up and running, uh, or if you haven't launched it yet, send me a link to that. We'll include that as well, and we'll start promoting that on our uh, uh, Twitter oh, channel. We already, we already did the Kickstarter. We did it two years ago. So oh. that's, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's our yeah. Uh, I thought it was a new thing. Yeah, and then we we did win. Uh, we won three festivals, and I traveled all over the world doing. Uh, you know, uh, showing the film and stuff. And we were just late in getting a distributor because I just, I didn't feel comfortable with who I met. I wanted someone that truly appreciated the film and would promote it. And uh, that's when we got Black Star through a, we won the Dallas Film Festival. And they said, I want you to meet so-and-so. And so, and that's the only reason I was able to find a decent distributor, distributor and get this film out there, so. Well, it, it really is uh, worth your while watching it, guys. Um, check this thing out on Amazon streaming. Get it a couple of times so that you can get a DVD because I'll tell you what, I'm old school. I want my hands on stuff. I don't get digital comic books. I don't. I stream digital movies, but by golly, I will own a copy if I can because they can shut that stuff down and you don't own nothing. But they're going to have to come into my house and pull my DVDs and books out of my cold, dead hands. That's um, the way I feel. <laughs> yeah. I want a hard copy. Hard copy. Hard copy. Hard I can still watch it. I print out a hard copy of Twitter every morning and go read it in the bathroom. Uh. <laughs> and then I come out at six. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, appreciate you all coming here tonight. Uh, is there anything about the Church of the Subgenius? Uh, and this is an open-ended question that you've been waiting for me or somebody to ask, and they've never given you the question. They've never opened the door. Subgenius.com. Subgenius.com. <laughs> Subgenius.com. And thank you, RJ, so much. Thanks, you, RJ. For, for, yes. Really, thank really fun. Much. Thanks, Sandy. Uh, thank you, guys. I hope everything goes well. Keep your fingers crossed. Yeah. We'll do, and we will have a review of J.R. Bob Dobbs and the Church of the Subgenius up at Critical Blast this weekend, and we'll, we'll embed this video in it. So if you're already reading the review, you know it's there. If you're watching us here on YouTube, go there and see it again. Okay. Yeah. <laughs>